This lean out has been the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. Guess what, the friends? In this video, I'm gonna be sharing my week one weigh-in results from my spring lean out with you. And then I'm gonna do a bit of a check-in, chat with you, and let you know why this lean out has been the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. Before I share my results, I am also gonna share my glute workout with you, so stay till the end so you can see that. And I also just wanna let you know, if you don't know, every December for you know, three months, I allow myself to eat in a calorie surplus, gain a bit of weight for a diet break, and to build muscle. So I've put on 18 pounds over the last three months, and I've been on a mission this week to start leaning out for spring. So I was like 157.6 or something like that, and now I am 156.4, so I have lost 1.3 pounds, yes, yes, yes. In exactly one week, I am down 1.3 pounds. And it's even more exciting because I am on my period. So the fact that the scale has moved, even bloated, that's really cool. That means that my body is really responding to what I'm eating and stuff. The reason why this has been the hardest is because like, if you don't know, I've lost 130 pounds and I've kept it off for eight years. In order to lose the weight, I also had to work through emotional eating. I thought if I could just work through those things that I would be happy and everything would be great. And I lost the weight, which was amazing. And I actually helped reverse some health issues like sleep apnea and stuff. And I worked through my emotional eating. But what happened was when I lost the weight and worked through the emotional eating, I wasn't using food to cope anymore. And I worked on a lot of stuff, but there were things, layers, from my traumatic childhood that I didn't fully look at. And so what happened was it went into massive anxiety. And then I noticed when I was doing lean outs, which I do every year for the past few years, like I said before, I noticed I was starting to find a new emotional eating, gum. And this might sound silly, but I started using gum all the time to cope. It was like in between meals, I was hungry. So I was like, oh, I'll chew a piece of gum because sometimes that helps. But that turned in to a serious problem for me to the point where I could not be chewing gum. And I was going through three to four packs of gum a day. I was buying like gum by the like bag load and I was hiding it. It wasn't telling anyone, I wasn't telling Kyle, my husband. And I was chewing so much gum, so much to avoid looking at stuff and to just avoid trusting myself and being with me. Like I couldn't just be. I couldn't just be in between meals or even all day. It was like I needed to replace the using food and that was it. The gum chewing, the obsessive gum chewing, it was causing me pain. It was causing me um, sores in my mouth, um, cold sores, canker sores, and it was causing like cavities and really sore teeth. And I, I realized that it was an issue, but I, I don't ever talk about this, but I've struggled with this for the past few years. And I really wanted to work on it. And every time I try, I realized I had to do it the way I started. When I started working through my emotional eating, there were certain foods I couldn't buy. I just couldn't have them in the house until I worked through stuff and then now I can have them. So I couldn't buy gum because anytime I did, I would chew the entire pack in about a minute. I just, I needed to pop one piece after another. It was like um, searching for something to make me feel better. And I realized like if I don't, deal with stuff. This is going to keep popping up in other areas, in gum, in anxiety, in not being able to sleep. All these little areas where I was sneakily kind of making things a punishment. And I realized that today when I started thinking about how I wanted to make this video for you guys, I always say on the channel, like, don't make weight loss a punishment. I was starting to do that 
by obsessively chewing gum, I was making the weight loss a punishment again, not making it fun and, you know, hurting myself. And so I realized like, I have to go deeper. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because, well, I'm facing it for the first time ever. And that's why this week has been the hardest because I am not using a crutch. In between meals when I'm hungry, um, I sit with it. I don't reach for gum. And I have worked through it to the point where I can have gum in the house now and I don't need to chew it because I don't want to need something to make me feel better. I want to trust myself that I'm okay without anything because all that is the chewing of the gum, the emotional eating, it's me hiding from the trauma that I don't want to look at, but I'll never heal if I don't look at it. And so even though it's scary, I got to look at it. I have to let myself just be, not use my head to overthink and cause myself anxiety, but just sit and say to myself, like, Nicole, you're okay. You'll be all right. This doesn't have to be a punishment leaning out. It, it should be fun, just like weight loss was. I'm really proud of myself because I, I haven't even, I thought about it a couple times and I was like, no, I'm really doing it. I'm worth it to work through this. I don't need things to, to cope. I don't need things to make me feel better because I'm good enough. I'm whole. I'm good enough the way I am. And it's been bringing up stuff and I've been kind of just sitting with it. And that's why I wanted to share this because if you're someone who's struggling to like lose weight or with anxiety or anything, you think like it's not getting better, go deeper. Like if you're struggling with losing weight and you know, you can't, you're like, okay, I can't figure out the food. Um, or I figured out the food. I figured out the diet. I figured out the exercise, but I'm still having a problem. Go deeper, go to the why, but why are you using food? Why are you, um, eating too much? That's what I have to look at. Why am I chewing gum? Because I'm avoiding stuff. I'm avoiding the silent stillness of just being me and being okay with it. And maybe you're avoiding stuff and then, so you're not looking at the why. And so try looking at the why. Yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. Like I was really embarrassed about sharing that and I'm really trying to work through um, being okay with just being vulnerable and being me and sharing everything I don't want to hide anything because like I learned from um, when I went through therapy for my emotional eating, secrets keep you sick. So anything that I keep in here, it's just going to hurt me. And like, it's okay. I was worried about judgment and people going, oh, gum, that's stupid. But that's what happens. If I don't deal with stuff, it'll go into other things. And so I just wanted to be open and honest and share that with you. And maybe it'll help somebody um, share something that they're struggling with and get it out in the open or look deeper, look at the why, why are you doing something? And um, yeah, so uh, before I move on, I'm gonna show you my glute workout, but if you wanna know exactly what I did to lose the 130 pounds, check out my weight loss eBooks. I have them links down below. Use code Nicole to save yourself 10%. And I also got the huddled HTLT Seps. I'm sponsored by this company. And I have these two products just because these are the two that are really helping me through my lean out. Creatine, it, your body naturally makes some of it, but if you're working out, it's really good to have it. Um, leaning out, it's helping me keep my muscles full because when I lean out, my muscles get flat. And it also helps me be a little stronger because when I'm leaning out, I do get a little weaker in the gym. So this is really helping with my training. The protein powders like s'mores and huddle, HTLT Sucks has so many good flavors, really helping satisfying my cravings while I'm leaning out and not having like any extra treats. Um, use code Nicole to save yourself 10% off that as well. Okay, so I start with a warm up, and the first thing that you're gonna see me do, I, I call them walkouts. So basically, I'm stretching my hamstrings. I bend down and I walk my hands out, see how I do this, and um, and then I walk my legs into my hands and I keep my core tight and you feel, you should feel like a hamstring stretch. I try, I don't lock out my knees, but I try to keep my legs as straight as possible so that I really get a hamstring stretch. So I do three walkouts and then I do like 
another hamstring stretch. I don't even know what this is called, but I like, I kind of lunge forward and put my hands on one side and then I put my hands on both sides of my legs and lean back so that I'm stretching my hamstrings both ways. I'm not an expert. <laughs> and then I do three sets of that. So like three per leg. And then I do, uh, I call them kind of like walk shufflers. So I'll put my hands up by my, like by my chest, kind of like that. And then I get in a squat position and I tighten my core and I lean forward slightly and I just walk using kind of like my glutes to kind of shuffle myself to the side. I go like four or five steps to the right and then four or five steps to the left. And I just do that once. It's just about warming up so that I don't injure myself, just like getting my muscles used to what I'm doing. And then I do just body weight squats. I put my hands up here again by like my chest and then I um, keep my core tight. I lean forward slightly, like keep myself sort of rounded. And then I just do squats. I sit down as if I'm like sitting in a chair. I squat and then I squeeze up, squeeze my glutes and I do it really slow so that I can really get you know, everything squeezed and worked in. And I do like four or five of those. And then I go into my first move, which is walking lunges. And I do two sets of 30 reps. And that means 15 reps per leg for a total of 30 reps. And I do that for two sets. And basically, I always, I don't know, I like to, like some people put their hands on their hips. I kind of like to do this. I feel like I have more of a balance. When I lunge, I kind of like to lunge a little bit out on an angle because I feel like it gets my glutes more and I stay leaned forward a bit because I really feel like it gets everything. Quads, glutes, hamstrings. It kind of works everything when I do it like that. And then, I step out of it leaned forward as well because it really puts emphasis on the glutes and I'm really sore after, it really works them really well. And I really like to do everything very like um, slow and intense, if that makes sense. Like I really am just very present so that I'm really getting the most out of everything because I only do two sets of everything. So I make sure I'm really connecting with my muscles and really working what I wanna work. Then the second one that I do is a Bulgarian split squat. And sometimes I use a bench in this one I'm using a chair and I'm using two 15 pound dumbbells. I do two sets of 10 reps per leg. And for that one, again, it's the same thing. I lean forward slightly because I feel like it gets my glutes more. And I just, I go very, always slow to lower myself in all my movements and I really squeeze at the top. And I'm always squeezing my glutes up and then squeezing at the top as well. So for everything you see, that's exactly what I'm doing. And then the next one that I do is goblet squats. I use a 40 pound dumbbell and I hold it um, up by my chest. And for this, I like to have my feet slightly angled outward and then I keep my core tight, my shoulders rounded slightly so that everything, all the emphasis is on my glutes. And I sit like squat down as if I'm sitting in a chair. And then when I come up, I come up as if I'm going straight out of a hole. Um, that Kyle explained that to me. It's like the perfect way to explain it. And again, I lower myself like slow and I'm squeezing my glutes on the way down and I'm squeezing them up and really squeezing at the top. And then I do two sets of 12. Next one, I do lying hamstring curls. I don't like using the machine because I don't really feel like I connect well. I feel like I connect well more with the lying hamstring curls. So I take a dumbbell, I lie face down on the ground, and I put the dumbbell in between the arches of my feet. Now I'm using a 30 pound dumbbell, but if you've never done these before, you do have, like I found I have to work, 
I had to work my way into those. I started with like five pounds, worked my way up like 10, 15, 20, until I got to 30. So don't feel bad if you can't do 30 pounds, start light, get used to it, and then try challenging yourself with more. I do two sets of 12 and I raise the weight up. I squeeze my glutes and my hamstrings the, to lift the dumbbell up and then I squeeze my glutes and my hamstrings and I lower it very slow. I don't let the dumbbell touch the ground because I wanna keep the tension on everything and then I squeeze them back up and that's how I do that one. And then I do a burnout move, like a finisher move and it's glute bridges with a dumbbell. I don't do this, but you can, if you wanna protect your hips from the dumbbell, you can put like a mat or a cushion or something underneath so that you're protected there. Um, I just find it easier to just hold the dumbbell on. And I'm using a 30 pound, when I'm not leaning out, I use a 40, but um, it's a little too heavy right now, so 30. Um, you can work your way up to that too, 30 might be too heavy. I do two sets of 15 to 20. If at 15 I can't do any more than 15, if I can push it, I'll do 20. And I always make sure again, I'm squeezing my glutes as I push the weight, like in my hips up. And I really squeeze my glutes at, uh, this, these are my glutes apparently, I really squeeze them at the top. And then lower back down slow do not get to the floor because you're gonna take the tension off. So you always wanna go just before you hit the floor and then squeeze the back up and you should feel the burn, my loves. So my leg day, I, work, I try to work everything, glutes, hamstrings, quads, um, did I leave anything out? All the beamy parts. Um, and I do that workout once a week on leg day, I do not do cardio. I do cardio every other day except leg day. If I did cardio and leg day, I wouldn't be able to give it my all. My legs would be too tired to do the leg workout. So that's why I don't do both of those on that day. Just legs is plenty. And then the, the day after when I do my cardio tomorrow, um, I allow myself to go a little bit slower pace because my legs are starting to get sore. So I give myself a bit of a break, but I still do the hour of cardio. I just um, go a little bit of a slower pace. And so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this vid cuties. A little bit of a mishy macaroni for ya. Don't forget if you didn't already, subscribe, okay cuties? Because then you can see all this lean out. You can see my updates and give this bit a thumbs up if you like it so everyone can see it, okay? Because the more pizza I see it, the better. So that we can learn and be sweet. And just watch this bit and this bit if you want to see how Sassy's lost the same amount of weight as me. 140 pounds, kept it off eight years. Want to see how we love our food and this love life? Then watch the bits. This one, this one. And I'll catch ya. I'll catch you in the next bit. Cute Rooney. And I'll keep you updated, so keep watching, sweethearts. Peace. <laughs> Yeah. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.